if you wanted to get started, we're having a chat today while I work. Um, if you wanted to get started food preserving, what would be the best and most economical way to go? I'm, I'm going to assume we don't have all the money in the world to do this. I have actually had a lot of friends message me and wanting to know, um, and it's an interesting question because I've been doing this for over 30 years. This is just a part of my life, and I have had all the tools working up for the last 13 years, like really focusing on the tools of the trade and building up my stash of jars. But what would I do if I was just starting out? That's the question we're working on right now. What would I do if I was just starting out and I needed, I wanted to start canning? What would I get? Well, the first thing is not shopping. The first thing is actually networking. The first thing I would do was contact all of my aunts, my uncle, uncle, uncles, because they do. Um, I would contact my mother, my grandparents, if they were still around, and I would ask everybody, hey, did Aunt Betty can? Did anybody can? Do we know anybody that can? If you hear of anybody, and I even posted this on social media, every four to six months I would post, if you guys know anybody that cans, that's getting, that used to can, that no longer wants their equipment, or has jars they don't need, please let me know, I would gladly, um, I would gladly take them off their hands and I'm willing to pay. And I got more people. I became, I became the person in the community that you would go to. Although I do not know why this guy dropped off all of his wife's jars at the dump. Um, they're in the dishwasher right now. Yes, I took jars from the dump, even though I'm banned. Thank you, Bridget. Um, so what would I do first? First, I would network and I would find, I would tell everybody that that's what I wanted to do because um, I would ask them to keep their eyes out for anybody that is getting rid of jars and to let me know that I would gladly take them. I mean, I literally drove hours and uh, over an hour to pick jars up and equipment. And I did pay, I have paid for them, but I'm getting, I got really good deals. I got an almost brand new all American pressure canner still in the box, maybe used once or twice. I don't even know how you can tell if an all American canner has been used because um, they like never age very rarely. And it's a beautiful canner. It's in fact, it's the one I use most often. And I got it, a whole bunch of jars, tomato juicer, a whole bunch of equipment all for under a hundred dollars for a hundred dollars so offer to pay offer to pick up go out of your way to get this stuff if somebody is cleaning out their their garage and they have these boxes because that's what happens they don't want to get rid of them because they're sentimental value i mean i have jars from the 1930s and i'm still using them today and every time i pop one open because you can date jars i wonder to myself i'm like wow, I wonder what was in here. Like, I really wonder if this jar, when they opened it, fed a family that was hungry and needed to eat. Like, we don't, we don't know what hunger is these days. We don't. So I often wonder what the people that have gifted me so many jars, um, what, they, what they had and what they did with them. You never have too many jars. I used to think I had too many jars. I don't think that anymore. And I am graciously accepting jars again because um, I need jars. So, but if I was you and I was starting out, I would start putting out in the community that, that I was looking for them, that I wanted to can and that I needed equipment. Um, and then wait for it to start pouring in. In the meantime, I would buy a water bath canner, um, a big one, so that I could do big batches. Now, before you go off and buy a water bath canner, I do have a store, an Amazon storefront, that has all of the stuff that, that I own in it. Um, like literally all my canning. It's the canning and preserving section. I would go there and check all this out. But they came out, Presto came out with a new canner that I'm gonna recommend. I know there are some people that say, oh no, I wouldn't. Presto is a very good name brand. I 
totally would use this pressure canner. Now, there are few things that you need to re remember when you're using it. It cans at 15 pounds per pressure, meaning I'm at sea level, so my pounds per pressure is 10, and it's going to can it at 15 pounds, so I'm gonna need to leave a little bit more headroom, headspace in the jars. So instead of canning at um, 15 pounds, it's gonna can at, instead of canning at 10 pounds, it's gonna can at 15. So when I put my one inch headspace in there, I'm gonna make sure it's a little bit more than one inch, um, just to allow for the expansion. Now, it is a pressure and a water bath canner, and it is called the Presto Pressure Canner, not the Presto Pressure Cooker. Cookers and canners are both totally different. Um, a cooker is for food, a canner is for food in jars. That's a good way of remembering it. So I would probably do that if I was brand new to canning because it's all in one. It is expensive, I will tell you that, but it is an all in one. I hate saying that because I really think a canner needs to have that experience right off the bat of how to work a pressure canner and a water bath canner. And then I would buy this book right here. I'd probably buy this first. This is the Ball Blue Book. It's also called the Ball um, Canning Bible. Um, I would buy this. This cover, you have to make sure it's this cover because if you buy a used book and it doesn't come with this cover, you bought the wrong one because this is the most updated version. Now, I do not like that version for the one reason that it has, um, when it recommends to do something, it's always recommending their products. So you're kind of like adopting all of Ball's products, which recently to me, their quality hasn't been like up to par, but I'm not one to talk. Um, and then start buying jars whenever you're out. Like if you see a sale on the canning jars, buy the canning jars and then start looking well and then think about a pressure canner and a water bath canner separate but if you're just starting out and you just want to see if you like it I would get that now the pros and cons that one is almost a set it and walk away there are certain things you have to babysit it for um, but it beeps at you and it tells you however it doesn't have the con of it is is it doesn't have as much space to can as many items. Like my All-American will do eight quarts. This one only does five quarts. Perfect for a family of two that just wants to can um, and put on their shelves to help them through you know tough times, but may not be enough. Like there are sometimes I have all three canners going. Um, there may not be enough room for a larger family. I mean, I'm a family of two, but I do big batches because I don't want to spend every day in the kitchen. That's what I'm talking about. So there's that. Now, hmm. I got these potatoes for 27 cents a pound. You do get what you pay for. <laughs> I will tell you that. Um, yeah. So you want to get started in food preserving. That's going to be what you're going to need. Motion detected at front door main house. My cat's one in. It's Charlie. <laughs> now, what can you do with a water bath canner? A water bath canner is anything with high acidic levels. If you are already in the comments men mentioning, I can, I can pressure can meat in my water bath canner. I just do it for three hours. Stop. I'm talking about somebody new that somebody needs to learn the rules. You need to learn the rules of canning before you start telling people what you do because you need to follow the, the rules first. And the reason I say you need to follow the rules is because you technically can hurt somebody, but it is, or your family, but it is extremely rare. But it still can happen. But once you know the rules, then you, then it, it's almost like you really are going to have to mess up. 
So we're talking to somebody new. Follow the rules. Your high acidic acidity is going to be jams, jellies, um, chutneys, conserves, which are jams with nuts in them. Um, chutneys are basically jams on a savory side. Salsas, because they have vinegar in them. Tomatoes that have lemon juice added to them. Because they've changed the acidic, acidity level of tomatoes have changed over the course, so you need to add a little bit of um, lemon juice from a bottle, not from an actual lemon, um, because that has a set amount of acidity. So your acidic items can be canned in a water bath canner. Uh, pickled, any item pickled, like pickles with cu cucumber pickles or carrot pickles or anything except for eggs. I don't know, I would never do eggs, but that's just me. I do eggs and store them in the fridge and my husband eats them like crazy. So pickling eggs. Uh, right off the bat, you can water glass as long as eggs, as long as you can find a source that tells you that like literally you tell them, you have to tell them, I want to water glass eggs do you do you wash them and they'll tell you if they should be water glassed or not because um most eggs that you're buying from somebody they may wash them because eggs can be very dirty but if you want like for me when i was selling chicken eggs and somebody wanted to preserve to water glass eggs and they said they needed them unwashed and clean I would have a basket on the side and when I went to the coop, I would take all of the eggs that were clean and which only happens in the summer when it's not raining because when it's raining, you get mud on eggs and I would set them aside for them and then they could come and pick those up. So if somebody had said that to me, um, I'd say, hey, yeah, let's do that, right? And I would set them aside for them. So you need to find somebody that you can trust that would do that and then pick water glassing eggs is making them shelf stable for a year to two is absolutely easy and i'm eating them for breakfast every day absolutely no difference in taste no difference in fluff nothing um and that's not even can that's not canning that's just preserving there are a ton of things you can do in pr the preserving world without needed equipment but it's nice to have the equipment so that when something comes your way, you have options. And a food dehydrator, like getting a nice, good quality food dehydrator. Corsery, Corsero came out with a really neat food dehydrator. My mother has it. I have a um, Cabela's huge, I actually have two, and I do use them both all at the same time. But the one that I like is my um, Cabela's and it's a 10 tray uh, pretty much squarish and it's huge and I got the one that was half that size actually I didn't get it my husband just my husband just for some reason shows up with these things like the UPS guy comes and he's like oh you need that and I'm like no I didn't and then all of a sudden I'm like oh well let's incorporate this into my world um, I'm doing dried canned potatoes so I'm canning them in the shape of french fries. These are french fries. And this method will be pressure canned and then I will air fry them to get them crispy. What else can I, I have so many of my friends that are asking me about this. That's my, that's my list of what I would buy. If I was just starting out and I didn't really know if I wanted it to be a lifestyle or not, I would get the Presto Digital Canner, which is about $250 to $317. So you're looking at an expense. Um, then I would get the water bath canner if I wanted to. If I knew I really liked it, I'd buy the water bath canner, a big one, so that I could do um, larger batches, especially when carrot season is around. You know, and then after you have, and then I get the All-American Pressure Canner. Why the All-American? Because the All-American Pressure Canner has no parts that you have to replace, and it is built to be passed down to generation to generation. Yes, the Pressure Canner is also, but you do have to have a rubber gasket replaced. 
And the Miro pressure canner also has a rubber gasket that needs to be replaced. And um, I have a Miro here. I don't have a Presto, um, except for my digital one. And the Miro was given to me and it needs to have its gasket replaced. And you know, quite honestly, I just don't even want to do it. It doesn't have a dial on it. Make sure you get a pressure canner that has a, a stovetop pressure canner for me. I just want it to have a dial because you really can tell more when you have a dial. Um, and that's about it. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to flip this up because you're just like working with me. And you can watch this while you are driving or listen to it while you're driving because there's nothing to see. Um, and then that's about it. But ask your community. Find your community out there. They, um, people that used to can really want to make sure that their stuff is going to somebody that will use it. That's huge. I mean, you're talking people that... I have jars that went through World War II. I mean, I have jars that went through the Great Depression and I'm still using them. There are some jars that I will not use. Mainly, those are the ones that do not have um, lids that fit them anymore because they changed the lids. Yeah, you thought I was done with potatoes. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. There are so many potatoes. It was a good sale, but I need to use them. I'm hoping this is my last batch. Um, these have already been washed. Yeah, I mean, I guess we can do a series on this. Ask me any questions. If there's anything you want to know, that's what I would do is, is building up. Do I need a juicer? No. Do I have a juicer? Not a steam juicer. No. Um, do I want one? Oh, heck yeah. You know of anybody that has one. Um, do I need a grain mill? No. Is it, do I have one? I have, yes, I do. Um, do I use it all the time? Because I bake my own bread, um, from the wheat berries because my body reacts to the processed flour, not the gluten. It reacts to the processed flour. And I have eliminated all of my discomfort from eating that processed flour products by grinding my own wheat. Um, so food preserving. And then you're going to need five gallon buckets or mylar bags, one gallon mylar bags. I would probably start with one gallon mylar bags and I would go to the store and um, buy a 40 pound bag of whatever beans and rice I ate. And I would take that and portion it out into the five gallon bucket, into the one gallon Mylar bags. I'd get some oxygen absorbers and I would preserve them. I am literally using black beans that are 12 years old and they cook up just fine in my Instant Pot. They cook up beautifully in my Instant Pot. But I add the salt to the end. I don't add the salt during the cooking process. And that has been a world of difference for me. So yeah. And then the rice. Rice will last you 25 years. Black beans will last you 25 years or indefinitely, right? And that is, I call that dry canning, um, dry goods canning. And you're just putting, you're just taking the product that came out of the field the year before and you're putting it in mylar bags and then you're sealing it with a hair straightener after you've put the oxygen absorber in there and squished out as much air as you can and then the oxygen absorber eats the rest of the air there's no oxygen in it so there's no bugs that can survive because um, bugs need oxygen don't stick it in the freezer uh, that's also how I store my wheat because flour does not store very long. I think the shelf life on flour is five years. So flour doesn't store very long, but wheat berries store indefinitely, um, at least 25 years. So I store my grains that I'm going to mill. I store them in mylar bags with the oxygen removed because nothing can hatch if they don't have oxygen. 
And that has worked very well for me for 12 years. I mean, I, I can make any kind of a bread product, pancakes, anything like that. What else? I'm trying to think of the other questions that might be asked. Ask me the questions and we'll just have another one of these conversations. I'm going to get going, you guys. Have a great day out there.